Here, uh, Mrs. Aida Abdurrahim, Dr. Aida Abdurrahim. She will tell what's going on right now in Sudan after the agreement and what the Sudanese uh, think, ab or think about that. Thank you very much uh, for coming, thanks for supporting in such weather. Thank you very much. Event, especially we are trying to uh, carry. We, we we give our condolences to those who are who died, who lost their life during this uh, very hard time in Sudan. And we still uh, find a lot of people still uh, uh, lost uh, their lives. Like we have women, some of the women they committed suicide because they have been uh, they were raped, and also some of them are kidnapped. Nobody knows where are they. So this is why we are trying to give some uh, some feedback about the agreement because most of the people they don't have an idea how this agreement. There was no access really to the information. So I just made a small summary and we can discuss later on. My colleague she's going to give some background, especially about the uh, uh, legal point of view. So. Uh, what exactly are the details of the agreement that has been between the opposition forces, uh, the opposition uh, forces of freedom and change at the FFC, I'm going to use FFC all the time, and the Transitional Military Council, the TMC in Sudan. There are uh, many sticky points. I will just start with the first one. How did it happen? How this agreement uh, started in Sudan? They said the agreement uh, it states that five civilians, that is the, the first one, which is going to be immediately implemented. The agreement states that five civilians, members of the FFC, and five uh, military persons, not conditionally member of the TMC, but could be chosen by the military establishment. And uh, 11 members in total, elected by the FFC, and decided upon by the side, by both sides, shall be shall make up the sovereign council that shall replace the presidency. This part is going to be uh, implemented as soon as possible. But we find out that the the FFC, after the third or after this agreement was signed, they rejected it and they uh, and they uh, consult the African Union, because they found that there are so many things which is not uh, really fit in them, specifically when, when the massacre started on the 3rd of June. So they, uh, because before the massacre, one day or two days before the massacre, uh, they supposed to sign this agreement. But the FFC, they said no, this, this part, specifically the Supreme Council, is uh, declining uh, the, the, the position of the civilians and it gives the majority of the upper hand for the, for the military uh, council. And then uh, it, it will not be uh, neutral because there is also some idea that they said the, uh, the, the military council they are going to use, of course, those uh, from the government, from the previous government, and the military council in this case, they are just buying time. This is what the people say. They are just buying time, and this is why they took it as it is. But later on, uh, the, uh, the African Union, they took this complaint, and they said, okay, we are going to change it. So they changed it, and they put it for the interest of the of the civilians. So the civilians, they will, will be having the right to elect more, more from the military, which is uh, 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 serve the interest of the civilians. And immediately after the, before, again, before the, the 3rd of June, and in the time when it's supposed to be signed, again, the, M, the TMC, they rejected it, and they said no, they are not going to sign. And this is the time exactly when the massacre started. As we said, the, the, they are just buying time, and they didn't want to implement it because they knew exactly that is the area where they can strengthen their position in, the, in, in, the, in power. They will be more empowered. So I don't know if you want to translate this part. Need translation? No. Okay, if there is nobody need, I will I will go to the second, the second part. The second part, which is the state. Then they said there is another one, the formulation. The formulation of the 
the civil formulation of the legisl uh, legislative council of the parliament. We're supposed to have 67 percentage of whom shall be nominated by the FFC, not only made up of the FFC members, but chosen also by the FFC 33 percentage nominated by other parties, and the, and the participation and the participated in Sudan revolution. So we have uh, the FFC. Of course, this is. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the group of the freedom, uh, forces of freedom and change. They are going to be the majority in this uh, in this regard. So the other politi political parties, they have the 33 percentage. And wh wh what I, I can say in this part, there is a six months or five months of this uh, uh, peaceful revolution. I can see there is a lot of benefit for the Sudanese, for the Sudan. After 30 years, 30 years of the regime. I don't know. 30 years? My guys. So, uh, I say that 30 years. Yeah? Okay. 30, 30 years of the government of uh, Al Bashir for the use, for the very peaceful peaceful demonstrations, they managed to gain 60 percentage, 60 percentage from this uh, from this agreement. So, which I think this is uh, already is, uh, successful, because if we look to the how the the, the uh, rebel in in West in West Sudan and in Darfur region, they have been fighting for the last 25 to 30 years, and they hardly gained this kind of uh, 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 of successful. So they managed to do something, but they still have a long way to go in order to achieve specifically the military part. And then with regard to this part, also it needs need time to be implemented. I think it's about three months before it can be put in place. So by this time, the military, the military council or the sovereign council will be already in place and there will be a lot of things implemented by the by the junta. And this where where's the sticky point and this why the people they refuse it. Then we have the, the the prime minister will be selected also from the FFC and the and the ministers of the executive for the three years transitional period of time. And this will be from the qualified technical professionals. So this is where also the selection is going to be also very difficult for the during the transitional period of time because most of the people that are living outside the country and most of them they can be also regarded as part of the of the government so we have then another another thing there, there is a, there will be in formation of an investigation committee to fully investigate all of the attacks that took place against civilians since the 12th of April 2019. So when the TMAC was formed, the investigation committees will have international community and African Union uh, oversight, so as to ensure transparency and independence. But here we have a problem. We still have, a, we still do not have a judiciary system which is very strong or neutral. Most of it are controlled by the regime for the last, by the government for the last. So it's going to be very difficult for them to implement this issue. And this is why the youth complain and said, on, and, and the Communist Party, and part of these people who are signing the agreement, they rejected. They rejected to accept this, this because that was a big issue with regard to investigation committee. So the investigation committee, we thought it should be neutral. But in the agreement, they said it should be national investigation committee. And it should be done by... Um, by lawyer and judiciary system. And this is, the, the lawyers and judiciary system is very weak in, in Sudan. So it, three years might take long time. Although to, to take care of this uh, uh, criminal which committed by, the, by this uh, regime, it was very clear. And also uh, the, the regime later on, after or before the 3rd of June or before the massacre, when the FFC were negotiated with the TMC, there were several demands. So they, they have also other several demands, but not all of the demands have been made part of the final agreement. So this is what 
also made the agreement not any more function, yeah? And then the TMC before the sale of Jew massacre were admin on the Sovereign Council headed by the military leaders. And it was to be part of the military establishment with the military majority and its members. So the FFC refused. They refused, they said no, they are not going to give up their position as the Supreme Council, as their majority in the, in the Supreme Council. So this is why then the African Union, they interfere in order to solve this problem. And still, this, of course, this is one of the sticky points which is not implemented. The Supreme Court will be still under control by the military junta. So what is the, what will be the now the duty? What are the duties and the power of the Supreme Presidential Council? Number one, they said eight duties should be signing of international treaties after their agreement from the transitional uh, parliament and the declaration of war and the calling of the state emergency of the parliament. So they have a lot of power, we can see that. And most of these laws and orders is going to be taken care of by the parliament, is going to be signed also by this uh, sovereign council. And this is why it was rejected. Then we have what will be the main institutional body and entities of the transitional. They said the prime ministers, the transitional parliament, and the sovereign council. These are the three bodies which are going to be responsible about the thing. And the three months period of time for this. So what, what, what we want? Also, what will be the, 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 the problem? There are uh, some, the, some area which is not addressed so you, during this uh, uh, agreement with regard to the representation of the women coming to the, during uh, or as part of the transitional government. <clears throat> it was not addressed very well. So, and then the, the, also the position of the youth is also uh, not addressed. So this is why there is a, a possibility of having uh, advisory commission or adv advisory committee from women and from the youth to be part of the, of the, of the parliament. And all this area, of course, is, uh, is not yet in place. And there is still chance to bring this, uh, this agreement maybe to be implemented. Because there is also some area which is not covered during this agreement, which is the military, the military or the rebel groups from the Darfur region, from uh, Nuba Mountain, and from the, uh, from Abanai, from uh, Nkesena. So th these people, they didn't, their, their blight were not addressed and also they were not. So this is why uh, we, we suggest that is these three movements, they can be the base, the base for, for the army. Because we have no army which is going to protect this revolution. We signed this agreement, but we are going to be very vulnerable. The agreement is so fragile, and the situation in Sudan might really go into civil war if we are not protect our back. So there is a chance now that is an agreement is going or more of agreement is going to be uh, uh, built up between these three three groups. This is one thing. The other things uh, we we can also benefit from. Uh, from the European Union here and from the African unions. Of course, we cannot rely, we cannot rely on the international community so much. How do they going to protect our agreement? So this should be internal issue, an internal force. And the investigation, for example, the sticky point, people they said, we don't want to sign this agreement unless uh, the investigation committee or the people who were killed by the Gunta uh, brought to the justice, and this is a very uh, 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 critical point and very, uh, very strong things. Uh, and I don't know how it's going to be implemented for the short term, but for the long term, it's going to be, of course, uh, put in place. But the most important things, all the evidence has to be kept in place, and also we have to try to get more support from the from the human rights, from the human rights in Genf or the international ICC, for example, and we can also rely on the African exp expertise. Like we have uh, a very strong experience from uh, uh, from uh, Rwanda, they created their own their own court 
with the, with, the, with, the, with the population, and they have also brought those which is very sticky boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to wrap up here, and uh, I will give my colleague. She's going to put the things. And uh, if you have any question, uh, you are welcome. Thank you.